What's up, guys? Back again with another banger. <laughs> no, guys, my name is Jose. I'm a videographer from the Dallas Fort Worth area. Um, I'm part time. I, I, I film and edit stuff, you know, part time, two days a week, and then I have a full time job. But anyway, the reason I'm making this video is obviously in the title. I'm doing a review, a quick review on the Sony A7S III. However, this channel doesn't really have a niche yet. Uh, I've done everything from hair videos, from family vlogs, and some product videos. But going forward, I do want to start trying to do more um, product, rev not product reviews, but like my experience with the equipment that I use. It's not going to be stuff that people send me. It's going to be stuff that I use actively every weekend whenever I shoot video. So with the Sony a7S III, I mean, geez, it's been out almost a year now. It's very popular. Most people know everything about it. So I'm just going to really just give more so my opinions on it. Um, and I'm going to separate them in the four categories on why I think this is a great camera and why I'm happy that I went with it. So going off with category number one is reliability, right? So I've never had a Canon camera, so I don't have a lot of experience with it overheating. However, I did have like an epiphany or just a like a sense of gratitude towards this camera um, about a few weeks ago um, I do a lot of outdoor events mind you so it wasn't just this this time but it was this specific time that I was outside and I'll show some clips of how that video turned out but I remember it being 98 it was hot and I remember touching my camera and thinking god this is so hot and I don't even see an overheating sign and I in that moment I thought I, I, I am so grateful that I got this camera because I cannot imagine the sentiment I would be feeling if I had a Canon camera, which by the way, they're, the new ones, I'm sure they're great, the color's great, but the feeling that I would be experiencing if I saw the overheating sign on a paid gig, uh, I, I don't even want to imagine it. I would be making a Craigslist, a Craigslist post on the way to the bathroom the day it happened. So with that being said, this camera, it's reliable, man. You could, you, you could be hot, cold, um, it, it, it could take a beating. I've dropped this camera, this is the most expensive camera I've ever bought in my life. And I've dropped this camera more than any other camera I've ever owned. I owned a Canon M50 and I've never dropped that camera. And I own a, this a7S III and I've dropped the crap out of it. In fact, I'm gonna send it in for repair uh, about next month, but it's got chips on the screen, it's got scuffs all over. It's a mess, man, but you know, it's durable. It works and I'm grateful that I got it. All right, category number two is gonna be ecosystem. Now I'm gonna keep this one short, but you know, obviously whenever you get into a new camera system, you have to look at the lenses that they offer because you're gonna be stuck with them. So to keep this one short, E-mount. It's really the best option. You know, it, you could get any lens that's E-mount, whether it's APS-C or full frame. The only disadvantage specifically to this camera is that you can't have APS-C mode in 4K, which is a damn shame, but I, I guess I understand. There's only so many megapixels that it can decrease to. Um, so you can still do it in 1080p, but man, if I'm being honest, like I'm a full content creator. A lot of the videos that I, po uh, that I make are going to small businesses who post it on their social media. So I render in 1080p. However, I have to shoot in 4K because I do a lot of keyframing. I do a lot of keyframing like ins, outs, zooms, and all that kind of stuff. So I need to have that extra resolution. So uh, shooting in 1080p doesn't uh, really benefit me. So having access to a PSC lenses, again, doesn't really appeal to me because I'm not going to shoot in 1080p. However, if I ever upgrade to like, I don't know, the A1 or some other camera that does have a PSC mode in 4K, then that option's back on the table. All right, and category number three, and this is gonna be a little bit of a jab towards the camera, but it's still ultimately more of a enlightenment that happened to me and how I got better as an editor because the color sucked on this camera. So here's why. Category three is color. Now, this camera is has 10 bit color, right? And if I'm, you know, being honest, this is the first camera I've had that has 10 bit color. I've always had 8 bit cameras and my workflow back then was just to fix exposure, slap on a lot, decrease the intensity till it looks good, and then that's it, call it a day. So a lot of people thought I color graded that stuff and it was like, nope, all I did was just put on a LUT color correct and that was it. So when I got this camera and I realized really quick that, wow, this color does not look good out of camera like Canon did, because uh, I came from a came from a Canon camera. So I had to learn 
quickly that I needed to color grade and fix skin tones, mess with hues and stuff, and that's not something that I've ever done. You know, I came from editing with LumaFusion and then jumping to DaVinci Resolve, which oddly enough, DaVinci Resolve is the best for color grading, but at the time, I didn't look at it that way. I just looked at it like it's something that's free. So, um, I knew that I had to learn color grading. Now, in that time from December when I bought it to now, or no, to like four months ago, there's been times when I thought, I should just sell this camera. I should just buy a cheaper camera that has good color, and then that's it. Just as long as it does at least um, 60p at a high bit rate, then that's fine. But I stuck with it, and I'm so glad that I did. So what I did instead was I got a master class. I bought a master class from this guy, um, Film Simplified. He was so good at explaining what everything does in DaVinci Resolve as far as HSL curves, uh, the hues, the um, the uh, qualifiers, power windows, you know, the new HDR controls, the spider webs. I know how to use all that now. And having that knowledge now, being able to color grade my footage with just like four nodes and no LUTs, it's that was such an invaluable lesson to me that it's like it's like an experience, a level up that I gained because this the color sucked. Because if it was great then I still wouldn't have bothered to learn all that stuff. I would have still just been fixing exposure, slapping on the LUT, and then that's it. So I'm glad that the color sucked so that I could learn how to color grade and fix it. Now, once you color grade the the, the color, color grade the footage, yeah, it looks great. You know, as long as just turn on your vector scope, fix the color, because the colors are, the, the skin tones, are, Jesus Christ. The skin tones, for whatever reason, are always green, like, or, or like have some kind of green tint I don't know what it is. I feel, and I've been trying to figure out how to fix this. I've been trying to, in camera, push the uh, tint towards magenta plus two. Sometimes it, I, I think it works. Sometimes I, it, green still pops in. And then I've tried adjusting the white balance with the magenta uh, shade in the like 0.75, still comes up. So I still don't know how to fix that. It'd be nice that if, well, I mean, I'll be honest, fixing that takes like a minute maybe two minutes so it's i'm not at a huge loss if it got corrected so i didn't have to fix it but i mean nonetheless it's just a little bit of time i could get back if it didn't have that problem so that's it that's color and um it's a plus and a negative i guess depending on you look at it four so the last one is just accessories the stuff that you add to it to make it work right um uh, as far as cages you know, I think small rig, they know that we're chumps. They know that we're gonna rig the crap out of this camera. So what they did is they lowered the price of the cage super cheap. Like all their cages are like 80, 90 bucks. The cage for the Sony A7S III, $40 most times if it's not on sale. If it's on sale, it's less than 40. And then they get you because they they make all these other little bitty accessories that add to it. And then the, the next thing you know, you're spending hundreds of dollars on just accessories. But anyway, accessories is another one because you can do so much with it as far as, you know, SD cards, uh, CF Express type A, the batteries, oh my God, Z100 batteries is the best that I've ever had. I mean, you could do two or three of them bad boys and last all day. Now we'll say that um, I did briefly have the Sony a7 III and I had the Sony a7C prior and the Z batteries on those would last all day however on this camera with 4k 60 it does drain quicker but i do find that it's still like let's say if i did a um eight hour wedding i i last on three or four batteries like the fifth one if i do use it it's that it's staying at like 80 percent but mind you i um i don't record little clips anymore you know now that i don't have a record limit i just mainly hit record and just capture as much as and the only time I really ever stop recording is if really there's nothing going on that's more to do with me though because I have a bad habit of stopping recording and then I forget to hit record again and I see something and I think I'm recording and I'm not thankfully this camera does have the red ring the red square around so to let me know but there's been times where I just forgot so now I just I just leave it on uh, so that's it in the future I probably will do a review and I'll also have a few lenses that I'm going to talk about the uh dji rs2 that's a oh god let me just say this 
I have never understood the term you get what you paid for until I got that gimbal. Oh my god, I've always gotten budget mediocre gimbals because I thought, man, they all do the same. I'm just going to pivot left, right? You know, I just need it to be steady. Jesus Christ, when I got the DJ RS2, holy. It is the best gimbal I have ever owned. It's the most expensive gimbal, but it is the best gimbal I have ever, ever owned. Like, I love it so much. But yeah, I'll do a video on that as well. Um, but that's it. And then this will all change in about a couple weeks. I have We're moving into our uh, forever home. <laughs> we're moving into our house in a couple weeks. So I'll have like a little mini studio there. But other than that, that was it. So in the future, I will be making more. It's mainly Sony gear um sony lenses dji stuff road stuff the stuff that i use and again it works for me you know nobody sends me this i just use it and i love it you know i'm a big i return a lot of stuff i return a lot of stuff if it doesn't work so whatever i do keep it means that it worked out for me so all right guys that is it that's my time and what's a good catchphrase i can start using now yeah we'll figure it out <laughs>